This podcast contains adult language, descriptions of violence, sexual references, and other possibly offensive themes. Listener discretion is advised. Previously on Back to the Story. Run, kid! Maybe it's better if you let the child go. As he grabs the child and pulls, oh, no. and like oh, a scuba no. diver falling into the ocean, oh, falls no. back. No! What have I done? Hitting into the blanket it <laughs> and disappears. Hi, I'm Hunter. Get rid of the brothers, don't let them get the key, and save the boy. Yeah, that about sums it up. I don't think this will be easy. Wait, are you guys ready to hop back in and find out what happens on the bridge to Terabithia? Uh, we oh, know what happens on the bridge to Terabithia. Oh, gosh. Spoilers. We don't need to think about that again. <laughs> uh, I don't remember the end of that book, and I don't apologize for that's it. That's because you. your, your <laughs> mind is protecting you. <laughs> I just blacked it out. All right, I think everyone's here. So you guys have just come up to the top of the stairs. And with a few quick strikes have brought down the ogre, standing guard at the top. You hear the port cutlass open and a juggernaut of an ogre begins tearing across the bridge towards you. And I forgot. Hunter just went, so you can use your movement if you want. Or what are y'all doing? Are y'all going towards the bridge or are you hanging back? Oh, I wasn't sure if we were still in initiative yeah, or we're not. Still in initiative. We're kind of loose. We're loose here. I'm moving up to where I can get a shot at this thing, hopefully. And as I pass by Hunter, I kind of glare at her and say, don't ever fucking touch me again. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna just touch her on the back as she passes. <laughs> <laughs> um, who am I going to follow up on that? I think I'm just gonna... Boy, I'm ready to throw down. Slap her hand away, and then uh, shoot three scorching rays off at this ogre, apparently, on the other side of the bridge, which I think I should have. Yeah, what's your range? A thousand feet? Wait, how far is it? It's like 190 or so. Oh, yeah, I I have a range of... 240. 240. Yeah, go ahead and make your attacks. And who's next is... Cavalry rushes up, begins. I'm gonna scramble up and grab my um, dagger out of the thing, so I have to use another one. What's wrong now? First is 15. Second is 23. Third is 21. Two hit. The first one just slams and bursts against the shoulder to no effect. That is 16 points of fire damage. Damn, nice shot, Tiny. And uh, then I will step to the side. As he's continuing to charge across. Uh, Zeke will walk up and start being a shield wall. Ditto. Okay, so you'll rush up. I can actually help with that because I've got a shield as well right now. So I'll perch right behind the guys. Okay, so Vesper, Calvin, and Ezekiel approach making a shield wall. Uh, I'll stay up close to them as well, actually. Kind of like a couple feet back from them. Okay. Bull and Hunter. Um, I'll just take up the rear, I guess. And, uh, I mean, yeah, Bull can't really do much, so he'll just take up the rear. Okay. uh, And maybe, like, dodge action, just ready to deflect any arrows, um, lightsaber Star Wars style. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to hold up on this side of the bridge until... I feel like we've got a bit of a better uh, grasp on not dying. <laughs> okay, so we will drop back into initiative here. With Hunter, are you are you just going to wait, holding your action as he's storming across? Yeah, I think so. I, I might... It's, it's a bit weird. I might hold a dash action. Okay. Just getting ready to charge. Yeah. And Vesper, are you holding as well? Yeah, I think I'm kind of just... Digging my feet in and trying to brace myself as a shield as well, like between the boys, you know? Okay. Just kind of reinforce what they're doing. Okay. Because they're better at it, but I can help. Got it. All right. And I'll bring this to him. As he begins to charge forth, sprinting forth is getting close, but is not quite reaching there. Um, Amson, 
are you just holding there? Uh, I'll just shoot a firebolt over the shield wall. Okay. That's not a great roll. That's a 15. It burst on his shoulders, but didn't seem to take any effect. Ezekiel? Does this bridge have railings? No railings. It's about 10 feet wide. No railings. It's about a 100 foot drop or so. Yeah. Don't want to fall. Let's see what I can do. Uh, I am going to use my action to pop out my wings. Uh, and then I will fly over to here. There, actually. Uh, and for my bonus action, I will bring up a healing spirit just one square north of Vesper, I think. Or no, Calvin. So if he needs to shift to get it, but hopefully everybody can have that option there. Okay. So popping the eagle's wings and flying about 100 feet above the field. Uh, shifting the healing spirit. Did you, what is it, uh, just wind swirling or? Uh, no, squirrels. Squirrels. Okay. So a pile of glowing squirrels appears, uh, dancing in, around in a circle just north of Calvin. And that'll bring us up to Ellery once more. As you see, so, the juggernaut charging forth towards Calvin and Vesper now. I'm going to move up to this corner to get a little bit of a better angle. And this time, I'm going to cast Eldritch Blast. Okay. Which I believe that's two rolls, one for each beam. Uh, the first is a nice big old nine. It slams, so it does nothing. And the second is 13. It, you can hear the metal bend under the straining force, warping somewhat, but doesn't slow him down. Fuck. That's it. Calvin. You're shouldered in the shield wall next to dancing, glowing squirrels. What do you do? Uh, Calvin will rush ahead and attack. Okay, so you move forward. As he ever brings the great club over his head, you strike. Uh, it's a 25 to hit. That hits. Does this one look a little bit more sturdy than the other one? Uh, it's hard to tell under the armor. It doesn't I'm especially... going to dump a smite into it just for giggles. Okay. And it's... 10 points to radiant 6 piercing. And uh, let's check again if he's still alive. He's still alive, but you can tell you've stopped it in its tracks, lifting it up. 16 to hit. The second strike clangs off of his heavy armor. And then I will bash him with my shield. Okay. Athletics roll. 22. Yeah. And are you knocking him to the ground or back? Can I knock him to the side or? Uh, You can knock him one square to the side. Four. Do you do that? Yeah, it's eight bludgeoning damage, by the way. Okay. With a quick strike through the metal, you release, hitting again and then turning, spinning, slapping with your shield upon him. He's on the edge, just barely tiptoeing about to fall, uh, but is maintaining his footing for now. I'll bring us up to here. Here's Calvin. Gee. An arrow bangs off of your left pauldron, Calvin. From the distance, you see... Uh, two glowing red eyes and smoke pouring out from the tip of the wall before he ducks under once more. Another arrow from another figure on the other corner flies over. This one hits at your feet, clatters before falling off the bridge. And that'll bring us up the ball. Ball will run up to, I guess, the base of this bridge. And before he does, he's going to uh, look to Hunter and kind of reach out his hand and say, uh, Come in. Uh, sure, lead, lead the way. If you're worried, you can stay behind me. And Ball will start to get onto the bridge. And can't do much, so that'll be the end of my turn. Okay. Or maybe as my action, just the dodge action. Okay. So you get a parrying stance for any arrows that might come by. Uh, Hunter, you see the Juggernaut just barely hanging on about the balance and fall off the bridge with a few arrows coming every now and then from the uh, ramparts of the castle beyond. Uh, okay, Hunter's going to... Quickly look over to Ellery and just sort of shout, y you've got the archers, right? Um, and then she's going to probably mutter something under her breath about, stay behind you. And then uh, and then run up to to try and kick this guy off the ledge. Let's see what we can do. One, two, three, four. Wait, I, wait. I've worked out the map. Give me a second. Uh, everyone else has worked out the map on my behalf. You're all so good to me. 
Um, mm, 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 mm. Okay, I can't get close enough to actually do anything, except, can I? If I get 40 feet, will he be within 20 feet of me? Probably. Uh, cool. Let's do that then, and I'm going to throw my hand axe at his face. Okay, so you rush up, kind of pushing past Ball, Amson, and Vesper, the spoke to Nazi, as you... <laughs> okay, make an attack roll. All right, so that is... A number that is 18 to hit. Just enough. Go ahead and roll damage. Uh, that is, I believe, 8 damage. <laughs> Slams into the metal helm. And you see he goes limp. His arms, instead of swaying, trying to keep balance, just go limp to his side as he falls back. <laughs> You're a sickening crunch. The I love it below. when they do that. Uh, Vesper. You can hear the straining of bowstrings in the distance. How far? From you? Yeah. A hundred-ish feet? A hundred and ninety uh, feet? Well, I can get ninety on my turn if I use action, bonus action, and movement to dash. So I will do that. Okay. So sprinting forth. And I'm going to kind of shield up right over my... To try and cover my head and... Okay. Shield arrows. over your head. Sprinting forth. Uh, that'll bring us up to Amson. Okay. <laughs> I just was for a million year, million miles away. It's called being a rogue. Get on my second level. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Amson takes psychic damage and has disadvantage on his next attack. Okay, Amson's going to run 30 feet up. Classic. Classic bard move. Yeah. And, uh... Jeez, she's so far away. Sure, I'm going to run a little bit closer, and I'm going to inspire Vesper. And let me pick a thing. And if I never knew you, I'd have probably died, it's true. Gone forever, if I never knew you. Vesper here in the song, upon the winds, you're sprinting quickly across the bridge. That will bring us up to Ezekiel. Flying 110 feet or so above the ground. Uh, can I see anything on the top? I guess I haven't flown up yet. How high does it look like I'd have to go to get a view up top? Uh, maybe 20, 25 feet. Okay, great. Uh, then I'll fly up 20 and get a couple squares closer just so I can. Do I see anybody up there? Yeah, you can see two. You can see the. Uh, red eyes gleaming on the left, and duck behind the wall, another ogre with a huge long bow on the right. They're both kind of ducked where you can't see them from the standard level. All right. I need to get a little bit closer, so I will dash, go another 30 feet. Six there. Uh, and then my bonus action, I will probably have to drop it soon, but I will scoot the healing spirit up 30 feet as well. I don't have control of it, so if you could just scoot that up six squares on the bridge for if anybody gets hit by an arrow, maybe it'll be helpful. Okay, so as Ezekiel is flying forward, Ellery. I'm going to run up to the stairs leading onto the bridge, but I'm not going to actually try and push past Ball at this point so that he won't have to push past me. And I am going to hold my action until I see... One of the archers pop up. Okay. Calvin. I don't know. Uh, I will rush ahead. Okay, charging forth, beginning to catch up to Vesper here. And that will bring us up to this. Um, you see on the left side, over the port cutlasses, you see two red eyes peeking above the wall, stretched out longbow, ready to fire Ellery. All right, so I'm casting Firebolt. That's 17. Uh, that was just it. All right. He would have cover, but for you, it doesn't matter. And that's 13 points of fire damage. Okay. She <laughs> slams into his shoulder as he releases the arrow. Did you have another bolt? Or just the one? It was just one, but it's uh, double dice now. Gotcha, gotcha, okay. Uh, so he's going to release the arrow towards Vesper. This is seven. <laughs> Flies over in your general direction. And he ducks below. That'll bring us up to the other side. 
The other ogre stands up, releases an arrow towards Vesper. Uh, that is a eight. <laughs> Clatters along the ground before he ducks down again. And ball. All right. Um, so ball's going to kind of take note of where these arrows are coming from, seeing everyone kind of making a dash for them, particularly Ezekiel. And then he's going to look at Hunter. And, and as he's, like, you see ball kind of charge up and start to sprint. And as he does, he's going to say, uh, like, just as he starts gaining that energy to Hunter, he's going to say, okay, maybe you can handle yourself. And then he's going to reach out his hand to Hunter, uh, and then he's going to uh, cast a spell, but I don't know if Hunter is willing to go with whatever Ball's about to do. We'll find out. <laughs> okay, so, well, are you are you a willing creature in what I'm about to do? <laughs> I guess, yeah. Turns okay. around, sees you reaching out, like, uh, yeah, sure, great. Cool. So, um, I will sprint through with my action, I will dash so I can kind of get ahead. And with my bonus action, I'm going to use my sorcery points so that way I can cast... Ah, uh, shit, I don't think I can do that. Anyway, this is what I want to do, and then Klaus, you can tell okay. me what I can do. So what I'd okay. like to do is kind of sprint, um, grab her hand, and like just kind of start jumping. And as I jump, I'm going to cast uh, Thunderstep. And using my metamagic spell, it doubles its range. So now it's 180 feet that I can thunder step to. Okay. And based on what I can see here, it's like that's exactly where the darkness is. So, um, so you'd be like, right up to the portcullis. Well, what I was hoping to do was to kind of like leap into the air, and if I could use my action to dash, I'd be. Do you have any movement? Do you have any movement left? Well, I have a bonus action. That's the the intention here was to use my action to dash, and then my sorcery points to do a bonus action. Okay. Did did the action get you there? The dash, um, or do you no, this is just this. I have five more feet of movement left. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Also, you can make a charisma check. We'll say. To, okay. Are you trying to get on top of the wall? Is that your goal? Yeah, exactly. Okay, okay. So to to aim it in this way, having to leap from the air instead of just from the ground, we'll say make a charisma check, and we'll see how close you get. We'll do it. Anyway. <laughs> uh, how's the natural one do? <laughs> <laughs> so you guys see ball grab hunters arm, begin to leap into the air. There's a loud thundering crack that echoes across this field. And there's another one. As of all, you slam into the port cutlass. Uh, it's rocking into the... You see your rocks and rubble kind of falling loose. And you take five points of bludgeoning damage as you crack in uh, to the port cutlass, bending the metal slightly, though the door does not budge. As I'm kind of recovering, I look to Hunter and I say, Not quite what was planned. Doesn't that thunder do thunder damage centered on uh, you as you land? Yeah, no, it's where I leave. Where you leave, okay. And it's supposed to be 10 feet out. Okay. So, all around you. But, uh, so yeah, you all are prone for right now, just to the edge of the port cutlass. Uh, that will bring us up to you, Hunter. No, big guy, that was, that's, you got some legs on you. So, Hunter, you and Ball are kind of on the ground in front of this bent, now port cutlass at the very entrance of the castle. You can hear the thundering steps kind of above on the ramparts as they're shifting to adjust. Oh, shoot, is it my turn? It is. <gasps> oh, boy. Um, so, half my movement to get up. Oh, jeez. Um, what am I going to do? I'm going to... I don't know. I'm, I'm going to hold my action. I'm going to keep letting Ball take the lead at the moment. Okay, so you, you stand up. You see the bent gate that's maybe about 10 feet tall, 10 feet wide. The top of the ramparts is maybe 20 feet as you kind of stand up surveying the situation that brings up the Vesper who's dashing across the bridge. Yeah, I'm going to keep doing that, and I can get up to Ball uh, now that he's in my way, and I'll try and kind of help him up. Okay. <laughs> Are you all right? That looked painful. I was trying something different. And as Vesper rushes up, Amson, you're just ahead of a few glowing, dancing squirrels. Uh, okay. Well, I'm just going to dash 60 feet. This is a freaking mod bridge. Holy crap. Uh, and nothing else is in range, so that's my turn. Okay, that will bring us up to Ezekiel. You're flying above. You can see the 
the ogre and Brad uh, ducking below the ramparts. You can see Brad has dropped the bow. You can see red lightning kind of crawling across his forearms. Great. I'll see you, your red lightning, um, and do some regular lightning. Uh, so my healing spirit goes away as I reach towards the sky and summon a thundercloud that bolts right down on him. Okay. Is that a dexterity save? That is. Oh, that's a seven. That will not do it. So uh, I can't see. My window is too wide. 16 lightning damage plus seven radiant because my wings are out. You see the lightning slams into him, kind of knocking him to the ground to his knees for a moment before he starts to struggle his way up. Are you staying there or are you flying closer? I've already flew closer, so. Okay. Um, that will bring us up to Ellery, standing at the other end of the bridge. Uh, so I I missed part of what just happened. Uh, where is Brad and can I see him from where I am? Uh, you can't currently see him, but you see the corner where he did pop up before. Ezekiel calls a lightning bolt in that general area strikes down. Okay. I am going to use my action to run, to, to dash forward, which is not that far. And then I will use two sorcery points. Oh, can I do that if I hold my action? Uh, you wouldn't be able to dash. Right. Can I see anything right now? Not currently. They're both okay. ducked below the ramparts. So in that case, I I take back what I said about dashing. Okay. So I just use my, my regular movement to run onto the bridge, and then I hold my action until I see Brad. Okay. So running, what action are you holding? This time, it's going to be Firebolt again. Okay. So holding the flames in your hand as you step up on the bridge. Calvin, still charging across. Basically. And as Calvin continues to charge, I'll bring us up, Brad. As you see Hunter and Ball, you can see Brad jumps off the ramparts down to the ground floor of this courtyard. And walks around the court. You can see red lightning running down his forearms as he steps up to the port cutlass, holding it in his hands. Holding it close. So and can I see him? At that point, from where I am? You can't see him. Okay. There's a number of people in front. You do see, however, popping up, the other ogre pops up with a longbow, shooting a bow downward towards mm. your friends. Okay, I'll go for the for the other ogre then. Okay. Well, as he knocks back. And that's a natural one. She explodes in your face. Go ahead and roll a D100 for one of those sweet, sweet sorcerer surges. 36. One of these days, there's going to be a roll of d10. Oh, no. Eight? Uh, so, that means that you, you suddenly <laughs> aged by eight years. You're now, <laughs> what are you, 30-ish? I would be at, at 28 then. All right. I was not 28. What? And I just had my birthday. Oh. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> Bay wild, man. It's crazy how time passes here. <laughs> the, the flames burst in your hand. It seemed to draw the energy from you into them, burning it away. Um, and as the air ogre shoots the air down, natural one, as he pulls back, overdrawing it, the bow string snaps in his hands as he throws it to the ground. <laughs> pulls out the big club and is going to leap upon you. Actually, roll decent on athletics. So he's going to jump right there. <laughs> Landing there. That'll bring us up to two ball. As you see crackling energy from Brad beyond the pork cutlass and beyond <laughs> leaping over your head and over behind you now. And he is he just gripping onto the, the gate? Is that what he's doing? No, he's he's not touching the gate. He's just kind of holding the energy in front of him. The red lining arcing between his fingers. Okay. Um, I think uh, I'll look to Hunter again and say, uh, how about I get you up there? And I'll try to, like, 
reach to throw you on my shoulders. You said it was roughly 20 feet up? Yes, about 20 feet up to the top of the rampart. Okay, so nice. if I'm if I'm 10 and you're, did you say 7 or 6? I'm like 6 feet. 6. And then maybe with a little bit of coordinated jumping and throwing, yeah. could I get her on top? Uh, you could certainly try, if you all both <laughs> rolled athletics. All right, okay. I'll certainly try. Okay, to pull the old alley oop. Do you want to do acrobatics and I do athletics, or is that worse for you? Um, they're, uh, they're basically the same, but I actually rolled pretty decent. I got a 14. I got a 14 too, but plus three, so math 17. Okay, so ball lifts you up. You fly up, grab the top of the ramparts, and pull and use your muscles to lift yourself just to the top of the rampart. Uh, where we you make are, such a great team. there's not a place to stand on the other side. You just are looking down at Brad standing right above where the pork cutlass gears would be. Perfect. Um, right where I want him. <laughs> and then with my bonus action, um, just, uh, just as she leaves, um, my reach, I'm going to cast, uh, Shield of Faith on her. Okay. Um, so that's plus two to your AC. And Yay. then I can't, like, step in front of Vesper somehow, can I? Uh, you're currently in front of her. Or step behind her, so she's oh. not. Uh, you wouldn't be able to unless, yeah, you wouldn't be able to this turn. Okay, well, I'll just kind of try to hover over her in some way. Okay. Stare so down the over. Start moving to defend Vesper. That'll bring us up to you, Hunter, uh, at the very top. I'm and coming. above the pork cutlass. Right down on Bradley's head. I know okay. that you told us what his full name was earlier, but I, I keep thinking of him as Bradley. Uh, Launching your strikes upon Bradley. Go ahead and make a tackle. Yes, scimitar. Woohoo! Okay, great. Um, so that is... Why am I so bad at numbers, you guys? Uh, uh, 19 to hit. Yeah, that'll hit. Uh, and I'll just roll the second attack now. Um, 18 plus 7 to hit, whatever that is. So. Yeah, that hits as well. Sweet! So the first attack is... More bats. Hold up. 11 damage? Okay. Uh, and the second attack is 10 damage. Okay. And roll an extra d6 um, for the fall damage you're transferring as you leap into the air, coming uh, down with a scimitar. Uh, extra 2 damage. <laughs> Striking down with all your weight on the first strike. Yeah. He's sliding to the ground, slinging another strike towards his legs as you land. And did you want to land on the ground floor or above him? When did you want to land? Let's go with above him. I like this height advantage. It feels yeah. more important than it is. Okay. So you kind of jump onto his shoulder, striking him quickly before shifting over to the ramparts landings um, that are about 10, 15 feet up or so with about a five foot wall uh, looking over the bridge. And that will bring us up to Vesper. I'm, I'm a stab him. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna stab him. Go ahead and make a stab action check. Um, uh, that's a twelve. This is enough to hit. Yeah. Uh, I don't suppose Ball being right there is gonna give me sneak attack on that though. Uh, no, unfortunately not. Okay. Well, that's six piercing then. Okay. <laughs> Just stabbing into this ogre's leg um, with his giant club as he bears down upon you. And then I'm gonna bonus action disengage and shuffle around Ball. Okay. To the other side, and that'll bring us up to Amson. Okay. Jeez. I can't see anybody. Uh, okay. I'm gonna run 30 feet. Uh, and this big ugly thing in front of me, I'm gonna use Firebolt. Okay. Uh, that's, that's a 16. Yeah, that is. Alright. Hey, that's a great roll. That is. Yeah, 16 points of fire damage. Okay. Slamming into his back as he bears towards Bull. And that will bring us up to Ezekiel. Uh, Flying in air. Okay. I will continue to keep pace with Amson above, getting closer and closer. Um, Brad is a large creature, so if I bring it down right in his center, I shouldn't hit anybody else around him, so another lightning bolt to Brad. Takes okay. safe. Oh, uh, terrible damage. 16. Well, he passes, so he takes 3 plus 7 radiant, so I don't know, I guess 
the radiant damage is from my wings, not from the spell. I don't know if that gets halved or not. Or not. It's uh, not we'll, we'll leave it as is. I'll figure it out later. So this holy lightning strikes down. You see Brad shift to the side, but as it slams into the stone in front of him, arcing up into his shins and legs below. And that will bring us up to Ellery. This time, I will use my action to dash forward. Okay. And then I will use sorcery points to cast Firebolt as a bonus action. Okay. And are you firing at the ogre? Yeah, at the ogre. I'm assuming okay. I still can't see Brad. Yeah, you can't see Brad, but you can see the ogre as he's bearing down towards Bob again to swing a great club as so that flames was, ripple um, through the air. Uh, 14 to hit. Yeah, slams what? into his back. For only five points of fire damage. In the back of his head, you can see that his back is burnt between you and Amson um, as he's beginning to slowly kind of stagger his way, still standing. And that will bring us up to Calvin. Um, actually, before you go, Calvin, you see Brad staring up at Hunter. Idiots. <laughs> and releases this red lightning in a massive 60-foot cone. This doesn't sound like it's going to be fun. <laughs> through the port cutlass, <laughs> slamming into the bars. <laughs> kind of ripples out that dent that Ball and Hunter put into it. And I need Vesper, Ball, and Calvin to make dexterity saving throws. Oh, hell too bad. Yeah. Everybody's away from me. That's a natural 20. That's okay. also a natural 20. Well, you Fuck know what? So, yeah. suck it, DM. Okay, so you will take half damage instead. Uh, I rolled a 23. I'm going to use my reaction to take no damage. Oh, my God. Okay. Like... So, instead of 38 <laughs> damage, Vesper and Ball take 19 lightning damage. And Calvin, as the lightning rushes forward, you put your shield up. You feel your shoulder clench up with force and resist against the lightning. This other guy takes half damage as it doesn't matter because the ogre is fried. You can see his uh, large form, the pulsing red, red lightning going over his form as he flies off the bridge. Landing a moment later. Same thing when the, the lightning, when Ball feels the lightning, just before it kind of intensifies too much, he's going to use his action or his reaction to absorb elements and try to soften the blow. Okay. So 19 and that would be reduced to nine. Yeah. And that will bring us up to Calvin. Calvin will saunter up to Ball and I guess use his action to dash, but just squeeze past him, maybe. Okay. And. Our, uh, it, it's the portcullis is down currently, correct? Yeah, still down, partially dented in multiple ways, but down. Okay, then uh, Calvin will spit in his hands and rub them together and get and look at somebody like, are we going to do this? And then wait for my next, next turn. Okay, so you begin to get ready to lift this portcullis. That will bring us up to Brad, <laughs> who is going to turn and sprint away, <sighs> jumping over the table. Moving towards the door. Um, Hunter, you Excuse get attack of opportunity. Me? Calvin and Vesper could take up attack of opportunity. You'd be a disadvantage through the port cutlass. I'm going to do it. That's a natural 20 for my Good. attack of opportunity. Um, I'm going to use that. Do, do, do. 22. You say Calvin could? Yeah. Yeah, it'd be a disadvantage to strike through the port cutlass, but you could, you could do 22. I rolled a 21. Damage. Yeah, you get attack. At disadvantage? Yep, because I use my um, inspiration. Okay, so um, that hits as well. Three, six, seven, eight, uh, eleven piercing. Okay, quickly striking the two of you. Did you throw a dagger through or just stab? Yeah, or okay. I'll probably stabbed if he's right there. Stabbing um, as Hunter does the same thing from her height advantage, striking Calvin. You quickly go to reach towards your spear, but he's already moved. You kind of put your hands back on the uh, pork cutlass as he continues to run. And he's going to go ahead and dash. No! Get back here, you loser! Um, and that will that will be his turn. And that will bring us up to that guy, which is dead. And down to Ball. Oh, sorry. Pause. I can't do sneak attack when I'm at disadvantage. Thank you. 
Okay. For that, so it was only five. Okay. All right, so Ball. Um, so Ball's going to take a deep breath, see both um, Esper and Calvin beside him, and say, uh, we'll be able to don't mess it up this time. And then he's going to take 20 steps back. Um, is uh, Brad still in sight through the portcullis? Yeah, he's slammed through the doors and slammed it behind him. Okay. Well, I'm going to just do it anyway. Actually, screw it. Yeah, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to take a few steps back and then try to do this uh, thunder step again. Um, okay. Getting, I can't, I know that you're saying I can see through this gate, but I can't see it on the screen. So just, I can move up to 90 feet. Okay. So you want to get as close to that door as you want to. Would that be possible. within 90 feet or should I, I still have one sorcery point left that I'd be willing to use. Yeah, no, that was it. 90 feet should get you there. Yeah, 90 would get you right at the door. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Okay. Large thunder blast shakes some of the bridge from where you stand. <laughs> if you can ride in front of this uh, heavy stone door that's currently closed. And I'm just going to... I can't actually, but I'm just going to start to try to okay. open the door. You start to kick it open. Uh, that'll bring us up to Hunter. So you are now in this courtyard. You can see the ramparts around the sides in the central uh, doorway that leads further into the castle. Um, I'm probably gonna hop down over the ledge rather than going by the stairs and uh, try try to join in the door kicking. Okay. Don't want Brad to get away. Okay, so you can just hop down. What's your speed, 40? Uh, yes. Here, is that right? You can get there with, with 40 and you can dash to get closer as you yeah. pop down. I'll Slide. do that then. Pushing up to get next to Ball, and that will bring us up to Vesper. Well, seeing all the strong people run away, I will sigh, I will look at Calvin, I will sheath my dagger and spit on my hands and try and help him with this fucking portcullis. Okay. Uh, make a athletics check. It's not going to go well, I can tell you that much. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. That's a five. You strain. And it doesn't move. It doesn't budge. No, didn't think it would. All right. Uh, that'll bring us up to Amson. All right. This is pretty great. Um, gosh, I don't know. I'm just going to run up behind Vesper and Calvin. I'll just hold a firebolt in case anybody else mean comes around the corner. Sure. So you're prepared just in case. That brings up to Ezekiel. Okay. Uh, I guess I'm just going to dash as far as I can. So I... Is Ezekiel strong enough to lift one of us over the gate? Uh, my wings are super slow. I'm not going to make it. Like, it's going to take me longer than if you just lift up, up the damn gate. <laughs> so Ezekiel continuing to fly forward. Ellery? Uh, so f first thing I do is I dash. And frustrated that I've fallen so far behind everyone else. And having seen Ball do this twice, thinking... I think I can do that, too. And I focus on the feeling of thunder, and using two sorcery points, I cast Thunder Step, and I think that will get me just past the table. Okay. A loud, thunderous roar as you land, sliding across the table, landing on the other side. Fuck, that's fun. As the echo is going to bounce off this bowl of ridge that you find yourself in. And that will bring us up to Calvin. I guess uh, Calvin will make a strength check to pull okay. up on this score. Athletics, and with advantage since you're getting some help. Man, athletics. That's some crap. 17. You, <laughs> you find uh, the bent metal is harder to push up as you're kind of pushing it against the gears. You get up to your hips, put your legs under, power cling it uh, up to your collarbone, and you get it right about there. You can kind of shift, kind of having it slam on your shoulders, and you're holding the weight. Go on through! Uh, so at this point, as the others are rushing through, uh, ball. All right, so at the door. Um, as I get ready to slam it, I'm going to just kind of reach my sword back. And with my bonus action, I'm going to cast Mantle. Um, and just as I start swinging down, that's kind of 
And when I make contact with the door, actually, I probably should have checked the door was open, but I didn't. So I'm just going to swing at it. Um, okay. And just as I make contact, that's when I kind of want to burst into flames. Okay. Make an athletics check. Actually, this, uh, make an attack roll. All right. Uh, 16. As you slam into this um, stone door, bursting into flames, roaring up into a tornado of flames before Hunter. You slam into the door, you hear it break. You hear the snapping of wood. It seems to be barred from the other side. It seems like you damaged the wood, but not completely. He's going to push on the door. And uh, I think I'll just kind of like yell out after the hit, releasing some frustration, and uh, that'll be the end of my turn. Okay. Bring us up to Hunter. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm going to... You, you said the door's splintered in a little bit, but it's not completely broken through? You can see it's cracked in. You can definitely hear on the other side it's barred with a heavy piece of wood um, that is splintered or cracked. You can hear it. There's a little bit of me that wants to just hack it open a little bit more, and here's Johnny through the crack. Um, oh, man, okay. What am I going to do? I'm going to... There's nothing else I can do. Um, I'm going to try to open up this hole that we've started cracking in the door. A couple, okay. A couple more swings of... Okay, go ahead and make an attack roll. Hacking with this scimitar, this moon glass scimitar that definitely should not be used for this. But there we go. Um, Not good. That is a small number. That is uh, 11. So you, you hit it and it got to rebalance off the stone door itself. You can try again. I'll try. Uh, 14. Uh, you do it again. You can hear it snapping a little bit. It's weakening. You now see between you and Ball pushing on it, the what's left of the wood is bending. Uh, one more good strike will probably bring it down. Hmm. I just, that was the sound of me strongly considering entering a frenzied rage just to, just to do that last thing. Um, but I won't. I'll probably just scream something. Sc- scream something at Brad about him, you know, smelling like the wrong end of an owl bear. I don't know. <laughs> so, um, as you're cursing, uh, Brad trying to get in through this door, uh, Vesper and Amson. Calvin currently has the full cutlass power clinging on to the back of his shoulder, barely holding it up. I'll rush in. I'm going to wait. Get out of the way, but wait here for Calvin. Okay. Uh, I'm going to rush through, and uh, once I'm through, I'm going to inspire Hunter, and Anson's going to sing... Well, she's hot-blooded, check it and see... She's as angry as in health can be. Come on, Hunter, slash him with your axe. She's hot-blooded, hot-blooded. Yeah, I am. All right, so singing as you move through. Um, Ellery, you've made it into the courtyard. You see Hunter and Ball working on the door, beginning to break it open. I'm going to see if it helps to cast Eldritch Blast at the door. Okay, make an attack roll. Can I see it well enough? With ball in the way, it's pretty much all blocked. With ball mm. and hunter in the way. Um, if I can't see it well enough to hit it, then I think I'm just gonna wait. Okay. Calvin, you, I assume, step forward, <laughs> letting the port cutlass drop behind you. That's a safe assumption. Okay. Shifting up. Two for two. <laughs> I'm sorry, Calvin. You're mostly Michael. Uh, and that will bring us up to Ball and then Hunter again. All right, uh, I'm going to slam at it one more time. Um, did I get missed? Did you? Oh, yeah, I did miss, miss you. I'm going to transfer my powers to Ezekiel and let him do it for me. Uh, can you just scoot me over to the other side of this wall here? Yes. I can't really do much, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six... Uh, yep, I guess I'm going to dash. Uh, and I don't know how tall the door is, but I want to hover above so I'm not blocking anybody. Okay. Um, the door's about 10 feet high as you're kind of uh, flying up above it. And uh, then that will bring us to Ellery and then Calvin. And then, well. Wait, sorry, so it, it, is it my turn now? I, yeah, it is yours. Okay, That's okay. Easy kill. Got it, okay. Um, so I'm going to swing down again. A great sword, uh, a 20? Yeah. And as you slam into it, 
and that is enough to you hear the uh, the wooden bar splinter and shatter behind the stone doors being forced open, uh, revealing the inside uh, right. of part of this castle. Um, as you all kind of assume to move in, you see to the left uh, there's a weapon rack. Looks like a few arrow slits that could be fired into the courtyard. To the right looks like a staircase down. You don't see Brad. Okay, so I'm going to charge in. I'm going to guess that it's the staircase down. So I'm going to take two steps in, two steps to the right, and then final move to there, and that's where I'm going to end my turn. Okay. And as y'all move in, I'm just going to put you in the order you're in. You come around the staircase, winding around, um, and you see at the bottom of the staircase, uh, opening up into a room in the lower of the floor. You see the room is large. There is two walkways um, that are kind of elevated about 10 feet off the ground. There's a few columns marking those walkways. There's staircases that lead down to a lower level where there is a long carpet leading up to two thrones. Upon the throne, you see the boy with a mug in his hand and looks like a key at his feet. You see standing forth in front of the boy is a bluish gray skinned creature with horns and white hair wisping in the wind that looks similar to Brad, but of another nature, another type. His eyes glow uh, bluish in energy. You don't see Brad, but you do see another ogre that kind of looks over towards you as he bats his club in his hand. Does that one move you all in here? Uh, for the sake of thing, I'm counting turns on my wings. How many would that would just be one more round to get to this one or two? Uh, probably one more. Okay. I think I only have four left with the wings. So rush around and down the stairs. Um, so at this point, I can't see anything except for the corridor that we're in. Yeah. Is that correct or no? I know how these maps work. I mean, come on, guys. This is my first radio. I've done You're this. You're a professional. There many, we go. Hey. Many times before. There you go. So you guys see the room. So One nice. of the columns has been knocked down to the ground. As you see this blue-skinned creature with a glaive over his shoulder is now kneeling down in a knight's pose as if to accept something from the boy. And going off the same initiative order, Hunter, you're up front. Uh, okay, Hunter's going to pat Baal on the shoulder and say, let's go, big guy, I'll take it from here, and just freaking run up. Probably, I need to remember I'm a barbarian now, what would I do? I'm going to run at the blue guy. Probably just dash, because I don't think I could. Gosh, Dale, get it together. If you rolled an athletics check, you can probably get to him, because you have to leap off the side. All right, I will try to do that. I have okay. I have inspiration, so. And you have okay. advantage if you're still raging. I do! Yay! Okay. All right. Oh, yes, nice. Um, That's a 21. Yeah, so you... Uh, stepping off of the guardrail, leaping. Weapon in air. Yeah, you're flying towards him right now. What do you do? Uh, just, just, a, just a nice little slice at his head. I say slice as though I'm not just hacking... Messily, but hey. Okay, you come down in a big arc with your scimitar. All right, and that is a 24 to hit. Yeah, that hits. Ask questions later. Um, I'm not in moonlight anymore, am I? You find it still glowing in this place. <gasps> Yay! Because that's more damage. I love because that. Fairly... Um, okay, uh, 16 damage. Yeah, so you whoosh, strike into <laughs> It seems August have arrived. As he looks over, agitated. I'm like muttering under my breath, like swearing in four different languages and foaming at the mouth, so. <laughs> and, uh, don't you have a second attack? Or possibly a third? I, I do have a second attack. And I will take it. Oh, <laughs> see, I nearly thought about not, but here we are. It's just too much fun. Oh, that's a natural 20. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, more maths, 16 again. Yeah, you hit. Oh, oh that's 16 that damage. Damaged, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Striking forward. And did you do the uh, radiant damage as well? The radiant damage as well? Yeah, for your blade. Oh, I did, yes. All right. So you <laughs> strike in twice. Um, he's beginning to tip over now from his knee stance. 
you've wounded him. He's already starting to look pretty rough. And okay. that will bring us towards him. He's going to turn. All right, I'll take out the dogs first. And he raises his glaive towards you. And a strike. Is a 19 to hit? Oh, um, you should still have plus two AC, assuming I make my constitution saves that I forgot to do. So I'm going to do that real quick. Also, either way, that brings my AC to 18, so... Oh, okay. Never mind then. Just going to have to take it. And I failed the constitution save, so never mind. All right, cool. Uh, and that is 12 slashing damage on the first strike. As he strikes again, 10 on the second one. First one <laughs> strikes across your leg. The second one, you duck under deftly, foaming at the mouth. And that'll bring us up to this guy with Amson. Yeah, with Vesper on deck. I'm real glad I get to mitigate that damage, y'all. And this ogre is just going to uh, sprinting up, but that's all he can do. That brings us to Vesper. You see an ogre is sprinted up the walkway and Hunter going toe-to-toe -to -toe against this other Oni-like creature. Can I step into this room like that, or is there a wall? Uh, that's a ten-foot drop-down. Fuck it. But you could I'll, do it. Yeah, I'll do it. Okay. You land. Uh, so that's... Oh, huh. what do you know? Uh, I will throw a dagger at this giant Oni guy, because I can't, I can't do anything else. Okay. That's a natural 20, though. Yeah, you hit. And sneak attack because of Hunter. Uh-huh. All right, so let's roll the... Okay, yeah, I... clearly my piercing damage needs work. Okay, okay. Uh, so that's six... Uh, 12. Okay. Piercing damage. Because daggers... Guys, hey, I don't know if you know this. Dagger is not that great. Uh, I will draw another one and just prepare another attack. Okay, so he's uh, sling the blade into his shoulder as he's focused on Hunter. That brings up to Amson. Okay, so I have a very minute but important question. Mm -hmm. uh, this kid, you said that he's on the throne and he has the key in his hand. The key's at his feet. Or at he's his feet. beginning to reach for it. Oh, okay, if he's beginning to reach for it, well, I'm going to cast Hold Person on him. Okay. There's a wisdom save right there. Um, and that is a eight. Nope. So he is paralyzed. So he is reaching down, almost gets to it, and then freezes up. And that is my turn, because I like where I am. All right. That will bring us up to Ezekiel. There's an ogre bearing down upon you and Ball. All right. I will uh, be sure to be still floating so that Calvin can get through if he needs to, and I will... Bonus action, cast Shillelagh on my staff, and then I'm going to try and whack him. Okay. Bring the staff down. That'll 19. hit. 19. So that is five bludgeoning, seven radiant, and a first level smite for another 12 radiant. So five bludgeoning, 19 radiant. That whack slams upon his big overhead, cracking a few of his teeth that fall out to the ground. Uh, blood pooling up as he kind of chews on his broken teeth like broken glass, uh, looking rough. Flying over, that'll bring us up to Hillary. Uh, how high is Ezekiel flying? Like 10 feet at most. Does he seem to look pretty healthy at this point? I'm fine. Okay. So, I... don't know I... what she's going to do to me, but... <laughs> <laughs> I am going to go ahead and... Drop. Which one am I going to use? Um, I'm going to drop Storm Sphere down, centered right at the bottom of these steps here. So that radius will include both of the baddies that we can see, Hunter and Ezekiel, but not Ball. And I'm going to use one sorcery point to cast this carefully so that Hunter and Ezekiel automatically make their save, which is a uh, strength saving throw. Uh, the ogre fails immediately as a <laughs> storm begins to form, whipping uh, the carpet and other things broken on the ground into a, f a frenzy. And Kairos, strength save? Mm -hmm. uh, 16. That'll make it. So he doesn't take... 
any damage. Nobody who, who makes the save takes any damage, so Ezekiel and Hunter are fine. But the ogre will take 11 points of bludgeoning damage. As he slammed against the wall and falls back. And then as, as my bonus action, I will send a bolt of lightning from the center of the storm towards Kairos. Okay. Since Is... he's in the radius, I have advantage. Okay. For 20, 21 points to hit. Or, <sighs> not points, 21 to hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that will be 16 points of lightning damage. As the, as the lightning slams into Kairos. And does a 15 make your save against the storm here? Yes. Okay. All right, so with the lightning arcing and a storm now in this room, anything else for you, Ellery? That's it. Okay, that brings us up to Calvin. How much movement does it take to drop down that little thing? Uh, it's 10 foot down, but you can roll an athletics check or just jump down. Uh, could I use all my movement to get here and then some? I mean, my my action and yeah. my dashing. Yeah. Yeah, you'd be able to cool. rush there, uh, jumping off. Cool. And I would like to use my bonus action to words that I don't remember. Uh, sacred offering. I'm using my channel divinity. I'm going to grip my holy symbol and uh, look into the face of this oni creature and shout, By the justice of Valasol, I will punish you! And then uh, I'm going to take 2d8 damage. Okay. So, and then I'll, that'll be my turn. And the, the light streaming beginning to stream from your wounds that will bring us up to this. So since Calvin has ended within the radius of the storm, he has to make a strength save. Either a 20 is what I'm looking at right now. I forgot the left advantage on. So just a 20. So you take no damage. I'm going to take no damage, uh, Mr. DM, Daddy, if that's cool with you. <laughs> I hate oh, it. I hate it so much. We've had this discussion. <laughs> How many times now? Thank you. Thank I, you, whoever did that. But, bless, bless you, because I'm not, I can't draw circles. Uh, okay. Uh, so suddenly appearing here is Bradley, and he's brandishing his glaive here. As he's beginning to charge in. And that'll bring us up to Ball. Alright, um, Ball, seeing the, uh, the much hated Bradley, is going to, uh, charge up to him. I can only get this close. So when I do get this close, um, I'm gonna kind of roar as I'm running towards him. And when I do roar, I'm going to, uh, like, beat my chest where my giant tattoo is, and I'm going to breathe on him, my rune weapon. <sighs> Flames roar, um, and that is a five. All right, so it'll be thirteen fire damage plus three, so sixteen fire damage total. Okay, rolling over him, burning and scalding some of his wounds that are healing up but are still present, and that will bring us up to Simon frozen, fails to save again, and up to Hunter again as you're standing in the midst of a storm rolling around you uh, with Kairos. The evil brother of Bradley brandishing a blade in front of him. Uh, did Ball make his strength save for being within the radius? Uh, he will do the strength save. Uh, that's an eight, so I think I'm going to take damage here, right? Yeah. Did I actually roll the damage for that one? I think I did. Uh, uh, maybe. Just roll it, roll it again, since I, I don't okay. remember how much it is. That's six points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. Between rocks and winds kind of slamming things into you as the storm picks up. And now I'll bring us up to Hunter. You're kind of standing just in the edge of this sphere. And I love it. And it's probably for the best, because that way I can't see Brad and get distracted. Yeah, I'm probably pretty single-minded right now. Uh, but with Calvin right next to me, um, I might start kind of, you know, edging around towards getting that, getting that sweet, sweet flanking. Oh my gosh, I can make that, right? One, two, three, four, five, and yeah, okay. okay. Um, and I would like to enter a frenzied rage! Okay, coming out of the storm, frenzied. 
Mm, yeah, exactly. Uh, even more <laughs> sort of wind tussled than usual. Um, so let me see. Ooh, um, I might use my inspiration on that one, which uh, still not great. Um, that's an 11 on the first attack. Okay, come around the side, you slam into his chain mail, his back, not unable to pierce through. Does um, that have an advantage? That was not with advantage. Oh, really good. <gasps> Yay! I forgot that I moved around for that very purpose. Um, that is uh, 17. That right. Oh, yes. Um, second attack is uh, with advantage, you said? Yeah. Um, so, why am I so bad at numbers? Okay, okay. Uh, 21. That hits as well. Um, Two strikes on the other side. <laughs> and the third one is only a nine. So, damage, actual damage. Why am I, guys, I usually run the game. How am I so bad at remembering <laughs> things right now? Nine on the first one. Okay. Sixteen on the second one. You cut into him twice, and he is not looking good right now. That will bring us up to him. You see some of the wounds. Ice snowflakes kind of crystallize over the wounds, healing them. As he brings... That's just not fair. He was beginning to force it and aim towards Calvin and Vesper and the others as he turns towards you, <laughs> releasing snow in your direction. And you need to make a constitution saving throw. Who does? Um, Hunter does. Oh, it didn't help. Didn't help. That's a That's a big eight. Okay, so you take 37 points of cold damage as a cone of cold crystallizes across your shoulders at the stone floor beyond. How many was that? 37. Oh, 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 oh. How are you okay, looking, great. Hunter? Uh, cold. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to step to the side here, get out of that storm sphere, and that'll bring us up to Vesper. Um, <laughs> I don't think I can safely get up to Hunter. I'm so sorry. Um, That's fine. Leave me be. I'll be fine. I'm going to run up here. Uh, the key is, I'm assuming, here-ish? Yeah, it's right in front of him. Can I grab it? You can try. I will try to grab the key. You reach down and you grab the chain and pull, but the key doesn't move. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take my shield off and put it over it, like as a dome, like so it's under okay. my shield. Yeah, you put your shield kind over. Of put one foot on the shield and then turn and throw my dagger at the... If okay. I have that amount of stuff that I can do. Uh, yeah, I'll say you can throw one. Okay, great. I will try that then. Ooh, that's a dirty 20. Yeah, that'll it. Okay, better. Work. Oh, I don't. No, I do have that. It's worse, though. So. You do have uh, well. I do. It's not awesome, though. But it's only seven piercing. Okay. <laughs> Striking into the back of Gyros. And that will bring us up to Amson. Alrighty, can I see Mr. Bradley across the way? You can. Okay. I would like to viciously mock Mr. Bradley. Uh, that is a 11 plus a number. That is 15. Damn it. Okay. Uh, he saves. Okay. What else are you doing? I don't have a lot of bonus action things, so. Um, I'm going to. Can I see Hunter clearly? Um, through the storm, probably not. Okay. Uh, in that case, I'm going to use my movement to jump down. Kind of okay. like that. Uh, and then the floor. now from this angle, can I kind of see Hunter? Not well. Not well, really. Well, you know she's there, though. You might be able to get an eye on for a second. Okay. I, that's all I need because I want to cast Healing Word. Okay. Aww. Sure, let's go with 4th level healing word. Why not? I don't use 4th level spell slot very often. Oh, that's 1, 2, 3, 4. So 10 plus 3 is 13. Yay, thank you. Okay, Ezekiel across, that'll bring us up to Ezekiel. Alright, I will also do a healing word on Hunter. Just level 2, though, because that's all I have. You spoiled me. Can you see through the cone or through the storm? Is it heavily obscured? Don't I think so. Don't I don't think it's obscured. Okay. okay. Uh, disadvantage on perception oh, checks to listen. 
It's okay. difficult terrain. Okay. But you can you can see through it, and it's just mm-hmm. wind for the most right. part. So, general, so 11 more points. And then I'm going to look at the big blue ogre and do a scorpion get over here with thorn whip. And we'll try that. 20. Yeah, that hits. So, six piercing, and he's pulled 10 feet. Uh, you know what? I'll pull him five feet back just so he's in. Uh, that same flanked position. Okay, so you pull him back as the thorn whip wraps around his left arm, <laughs> pulling him back. And, uh, uh, it. and I'll make a strength save. Or Actually, no, I can move out of it. So now that he's there, I can just get out of the sphere. Okay, that'll bring us up to Ellery. Oh, I'm sorry, one more thing. Uh, plus seven radiant, because my wings still have a couple turns. Okay, you see Kairos is not doing well. Uh, Ellery. I am going to cast, as my action, a Scorching Ray with two rays towards Brad and one towards Kairos. Okay. Um, so the first one towards Brad is 22 to hit. Got it. And that's for nine points of fire damage. Okay. Second towards Brad... I don't think it's going to hit with 12. That misses. Perfect. And then the third ray towards Kairos is 16. Just hits. Okay. For six points of fire damage. And then as my bonus action, I'm going to send another bolt of lightning towards Kairos. Okay. And... He's technically in the sphere enough. Okay. Advantage. As Brad ducks the second flame, as you slam the other one into Kairos, the ch- 21 to hit. That hits. That is 15 points of lightning damage. <laughs> Slams into him. You can see Kairos is now uh, about to fall to the ground. He's kind of using his glade to keep him up, uh, just barely standing at this point. And I get another surge. Okay. Roll a d100. Getting so many surges now. Nineteen. <laughs> so immediately as you do this, this thick, black, greasy substance just oozes out beneath your feet. Um, and you need to make a dexterity save. Okay. I've seen this spell before. Eleven. <laughs> you fall on your ass. You <laughs> Fall on your ass in your own grease spot. And that will end your turn. That will bring us up to Calvin. You can see Kairos is kind of leaning onto his glaive, uh, looking around in panic. Am I currently set up for advantage? You are. Calvin will hold his spear above his head and scream out, Judgment! And then he'll attack. Yeah, uh, it is. Plus three, that's 28 technically. But yeah. That cool. Is. Uh, so, uh, let's see here. It does nine plus two fire, and I'm going to dump a level two smite into it. So let's we'll just do a roll three d eight. As you do. It's not. It's not gonna. It doesn't get any bonuses, right? So that's eight uh, radiant damage. That's a shitty roll. Uh, and then I'm going to attack it. What? Uh, no need. How do you want to end, Kyra? Uh, I want to... Calvin will hold his spear, like I said, above his head, and he'll scream out, and he'll just slam it into his chest, uh, and, like, a fire erupts from the tip, from the back of the spear, it just kind of runs forward into the front, and it kind of bursts forth, uh, and spreads across him, and he has that final moment as he, uh, turns to ash. Okay, that's exactly what happens. And from the the wounds upon his body, that light spreads out, briefly igniting this place in light, in this place of no windows, as he burns away, his uh, eyes burning out, leaving nothing but a pile of ash, a glaive, and a mask that falls upon the pile of ash. And that will bring us up to Brad. Fuck. Shit. And he's going to rush over uh, towards Calvin. He's going to get right there. Did Calvin make his strength save? 
I mean, I haven't rolled it, but we can just assume. 16? He's fine. So he gets there as close as he can get. As he's flying straight towards Calvin. You see he's floating in the air, uh, rushing towards Calvin. And does Brad make his strength save? Uh, that is a dirty 20. Yeah, he's fine. And ball. How high in the air is he? Uh, he's about level with you. Okay, once I go down these steps, how high will he be? He's about uh, 10 feet or so off the ground. Okay. Um, so kind of, I'll take a step forward and while like half on the steps, uh, so that way he's still may my reach, I'm going to swing at him. Um, with, uh, Phoenix Blade, an 18. Uh, that will hit. Um, so it'll be nine slashing. Four, uh, seven fire damage because of I'm um, on fire, and then I'll add a level two smite. Um, for wow, uh, eighteen radiant damage. Okay. <sighs> Striking up at him, cutting through his thigh and leg. Um, he's looking rough at this point as he's trying to get a last strike into one Calvin. And then maybe with the rest of my movement, I'll just kind of try to get in his way. I think okay, might get an attack of opportunity here. Okay. Um, he won't. He will take it, actually. Uh, that is a 21. That will hit. 16 points of slapping, slashing damage. Of slapping I'll damage. 16 points of slapping damage. Of slappy damage. Um, as he's <laughs> flying over. And a strength save for a ball? Uh, 21, I think, is okay, right? Uh, yeah. Cool. And with Simon L still frozen in place, that'll bring us up to Hunter. Gyros is ash on the ground. You see Bradley flying in the air towards Galvin. Um, okay. It's it's um difficult terrain in the storm, isn't it? It is. Uh and he's in the sky, which is not my friend. Um probably what I'm gonna do is <laughs> Hunter would have been just like bashing with her sword, going for another swing against Kairos, and then he was dead. And so she just looks very impressed with Calvin for a moment before dipping her hands into the ash and smearing it down her sweaty, drool-covered face and then shouting over it to uh, Bradley and saying, Hey, you, you as good as your brother? You want to you wanna go? You want to go? And that's it. <laughs> okay. And then I hold my action for if he comes within range to attack. Okay. Uh, that'll bring us up to Vesper. Well, shit, son. Um, I can't really do anything right now because he's too far away and I ain't getting into that sphere. I'm going to sit on my shield <laughs> so okay. that nobody can get underneath All right, it. So you sit down uh, with Simon L still frozen, reaching for the key. Uh, Amson. Ah, he's not in range. Okay. I'm going to think, is he in range now? Okay. I'm going to try hideous laughter again on Bradley. Uh, that is a, what is a wisdom save? Yeah. 22. Ah, stop it with the wisdom he's just save f- save. flying forth, ignoring everything around, just focusing on Calvin, who killed his brother. Uh, as a bonus action, it, it, how's the lighting down here? Uh, there's a few braziers, it's dim, but you can see. Okay, as a bonus action, I'll just get my shade saber out. Okay, so pulling it out, the shadowy blade reveals itself. That uh, brings us up to Ezekiel. All right, I'm going to float down to the ground as, as low as I can. I was only like 10 feet up, but I want to get here. Actually, if I can get here, maybe that's a better angle. Uh, and I don't have much, and I will try and thorn whip Brad. Okay. Natural one. <laughs> uh, as soon as the thorn whip. Reaches into the sphere of storm. It just gets shattered and blown away. Uh, yeah. Anybody look injured terribly? Brad's brother does. Then that's my turn. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't look great. Oh, you don't? I don't. Uh, then Not I'm, quite bloodied, but I don't look awesome. Uh, I'll do another second level healing word to Vesper. Okay. Ooh. As you're turning to heal Vesper, Ellery, that brings us to you. Uh, so I'm going to stand up. Ugh, this shit is all over my clothes. Um, I'm gonna go and just from here, 
with uh, Brad floating in the air, can I see him well enough above Ball to get a hit on him? Yeah. With your okay. small sniper, you can. Uh, so I'm just going to go with the Firebolt this time. Okay. Math. My turn to math now. That's 15 to hit. Uh, that will miss as the flames get pushed okay. away by the winds. Then bonus action, lightning bolt uh, with advantage because he's in the sphere. That this time is uh, 17. That would just hit. Okay. 15 points of lightning damage. Okay. As it strikes into Bradley, uh, how do you want to do this? Nice. Um, so I I would like the lightning to kind of crackle all over the surface of his body and send him off course so that he goes slamming into the ashes of his brother. Okay. So as he's focused, gritting his teeth, <laughs> the heavy wounds upon his body as he's rushing towards Calvin to get his whatever revenge he can, the lightning... <laughs> Sparks and pulses around his body, shears into him. There's a loud, audible crack and a blinding flash of light that temporarily blinds you as he, grinding to a halt in front of his brother, slamming in as he turns to crimson ash and a mask drops down into the pile as the dust is washed through the wind into the air and the glaive clatters out his side. A few moments. And I let Storm Sphere drop. The wind comes to calm. As a few moments go by, no new threats pose themselves, as the room seems to be empty. I walk up to the kid and I slap the drink out of his hand. <laughs> He's still frozen in place, paralyzed from absence, so the uh, mud yeah, falls on the floor. I'll actually drop that now. Hunter's gonna walk up take off the kid's cloak that she's been wearing the whole time uh, and just kind of delicately wrap it back around his shoulders but not well. Just like just like a little bit of a shock blanket. How do we get here? You don't remember? Thirsty, I think. Maybe try some water. All we've seen you do since we first saw you is drink. Uh, I'm gonna... Good at so. I'm gonna walk up to him. I will grab my water skin and just kind of shove it in his face. It's gross. I'm not gonna drink that. Then I will just pour it over his head. Says the kid, right? You hear a voice from the stairs as he kind of peeks around. His uh, brother's gone. I'd only say. Two of them? Yeah, just two. I mean, you, you got your other cousins, but, uh, all right. Kind of walks out to do any. Well, uh, I think that's a job well done. If I do say so myself, I think you did an excellent job. Hey, kid, would you mind picking that key up for me? And he kind of Don't tries to get at But you're sitting um, on top of the ship. I will. Mm, yeah, no, I'm not going to move. Hunter's uh, going to also step into the space a little bit just to all right. keep uh, some distance between them. Got a little problem here. That's okay. We'll work this out. Uh, got the rest of your payment right here. Uh, we'll get you back to wherever you, you're going from, and uh, you know we'll conclude our business. How's that sound? I glance at Vesper and Hunter. Do we really need to get involved in this any further? I was actually just about to say, I think it's my turn to ask if this is actually your business. So I'll get up and shoulder my shield. I mean, it makes me uncomfortable, but I don't know how we'll get home. Mm, that last point's a really good one. I do want to get home. So. So deal. Ugh, fine. And I step out of the way. Okay. Actually, before we go anywhere, I am I am curious about one thing. You seem to know about the politics around here. Yeah, that's right. You ever hear of someone named Daphne? Yeah, I've heard of Daphne. You run into her? Maybe. Well, I mean, no offense, right? But you look like the type, you know, you look like the type that run into Daphne. 
and it, how it, oh go ahead yeah i was just gonna, you know if you have any trouble with sucky this and like i i know a guy who knows a guy who knows a girl she specializes in fiend contracts and gets you out of most stuff for a price have you ever met an indigo mm, no all right i'm worth a shot an indigo indigo like a fox thing red wolf yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've met a red wolf before, yeah. Why? Just curious. Is he something to worry about, or? I mean, if you outsmart red, a red wolf, I mean, come talk to me. You know, I might want to hire you. Oh, uh, right. Mm -hmm. Well, we got a court to found, you know. Uh, business will resume as usual, thanks to you. And uh, here's the rest of your coin. 3,000 total. We can get you back on. As I sell. I'll hold out my hand for the coin. He gives it to you. The big sack. Um, I mean, without counting it exactly, it looks about to be 1,500 in addition to the first. Well, let's get out of here. All right. Let me, uh, he kind of looks around, pulls out a pillow, uh, seemingly just from inside his cloak. Does it make sense that he would be able to hold it there? But he pulls it out of some pocket. Places it on the ground, pulls out a blanket and folds it, begins making the bed, similar to what he did before. Before we leave, can we look at the drop loot? Yeah, you Please. see two gleaming glaives. One, the steel metal has sort of a crimson tint, the other one has a bluish tint to the steel. And the two masks are tusked and with horns and as angry looking mask. Uh, one is white with gold and the other one um, is crimson with like a brass to it. I have the the red scale armor, right? Mm -hmm. And and what's uh, Zeke took the black, so I will go for the the crimson and the red glaives okay. and the mask. Uh, balls picked up the. I'm assuming the crimson and the red are the ones by Brad because balls picked those ones up. And I will fight you to the death until I find out what they did, and then maybe I'll change. That's fine. We can we can we can roll this if you want. Let's see here, what? I still got. Uh, well, I'll wait to the death after fight zombies. <laughs> <laughs> we gather up the shit. Yeah, you'll gather the stuff. All right, get in, and um, one by one, I assume you all jump in the bed. Ezekiel has sure. a weird thought as we all do it, but yeah. <laughs> okay, as one by one you jump in, waking back up upon the grass uh, in the woods. You can see nearby the light of the earth and copper uh, just beyond the tree line. Does it look like it's about the time we left? Uh, I mean, you're not sure. We'll find out next week. Oh, fuck. When we divide up the gold, I will hand Hunter's share to Amson and say, here, give that to her. All right. Here you go. Oh, I, I'm not taking the money. Oh. Okay, then don't give that to her. I gave it to Orizana. I divided it by, I helped divide it by eight, so. Alright, Orizana, here you go. I I'm just gonna, I'm just well, gonna lean up towards Baal and just say, the little one doesn't like me very much. I, yeah, I think when that happens, maybe Baal will say, uh, I think Hunter did her part. She deserves her share of the gold. No, no, no. I have no, no problem I'll, with her taking And I'll look to Hunter and say, I will really need gold around here. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, I appreciate I appreciate the the sentiment, but really I do not. I have had my fill of civilization for today. I'm gonna be heading back into the back into the wilds for the time being. Money. I just give Ezekiel a look. <laughs> Where are you off to, if you don't mind me asking? Just wandering. North, always north. I see. Heading to the mountains. That's the plan. Never quite works out, but. Always find myself back there. I will reach into my bag and pull out another one of the ember stones. Can you find a nice high place for this? And just leave it somewhere with a view? Hunter nods. Thank you. I always like the mountains. Thank you for your help. Well, nothing much else to do around here. And I know you don't seem to uh, get around civilization much, but if you find yourselves in the woods around Birch Grove, look for marks like this. And I will draw some druid scrawling. 
You might find some people you like. <laughs> uh, Hunter's going to look confused for a second and then probably just roll her eyes a little. <laughs> right. Well, it's been fun. Sort of. Uh, thanks for all your company. There was a lot of it. Don't die. She nods. Right back at you. And she just starts walking away. Uh, before you do, uh, Bo, like, just kind of like, almost like to shake your hand, will say, don't die either. Good luck hunting. And then he'll, um, use the ten points of lay on hands. I don't know if you're full at HP or not, but he does it anyway. It's kind of like a Aww, farewell that's real deal. Nice. I definitely was not at full hit points, so thank you. Ellery will just cross her arms in front of her and kind of glare a little bit and then say, mm, take care of yourself. So all I do. <laughs> Try not to shove people. There was fighting. There was fighting happening. Ezekiel's just going to grab Ellery by the shoulder. All right, Kayla, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> as Hunter walks off into the woods and the rest, um, and you part and go your separate ways, that is where we'll close off tonight and pick up whenever we do next. Hello, listeners. The cast of Back to the Story is going to be recording a fireside chat-style Q&A that will be published after our winter hiatus, beckoning in the second year of our podcast. We would love to take this time to open the floor for your burning questions. For Klaus, for the players, for the bronze scales, and for Dale and her player character, Hunter. Questions can be submitted through our Twitter, at back2 underscore the story, or our Tumblr, back hyphen to the hyphen story dot tumblr dot com. We will be accepting questions from now through Saturday, December 15th, ending at noon Pacific Standard Time. Our last episode of the year will be episode 38, Second Chances, and that will be released Wednesday, December 19th, and Friday, December 21st. We will return in January, once the holidays have died down, so keep a lookout for a schedule of our return. Thank you so much for all of your support, and we look forward to seeing how the show grows in the new year. Until next time, we will see you in Norithil. For notifications when an episode goes live, you can find us on Stitcher, Google Play, Player FM, or TuneIn. Download the app and subscribe or favorite us there. If you'd like to contact us, you can tweet us at back to underscore the story. If you can't fit it into 280 characters, you can email us at thebonfirefables at gmail.com. And if you'd like further information about the campaign, the player characters, NPCs, or behind-the-scenes sneak peeks, follow us on either Twitter or on our Tumblr website. Lastly, if you'd like to support the show, feel free to buy us a coffee at ko-fi.com slash back to the story.